Hello friends, this video is on a very interesting concept called as aldosterone escape. So, let's see what the concept is. Uh, before we talk about this concept, uh, let's discuss what is escape. You know, in general language, escape means uh, uh, running away without the notice of the authorities, leaving without somebody's notice. So, that's called as escape. Uh, what is the meaning of escape in human physiology? Well, uh, imagine that there is an organ system and it is under the influence of some regulator. Uh, initially, the regulator will exert its influence, but eventually the organ system will escape the effect of the regulator. So, that's the escape uh, in uh, human physiology. For example, we talk about vagal escape or aldosterone escape. Uh, is the vagus escaping? Is the aldosterone escaping? No. Uh, they are exerting their effects on some organ system and that effect is initially seen and later on the organ system escapes the effect uh, of that regulator. Alright, so vagal escape would mean that heart initially shows the effect of vagus but then it escapes the effect of vagus, that is vagal escape. Okay, now coming to the aldosterone escape, the, the concept that we are discussing here. What is the meaning of aldosterone escape? Look, function of aldosterone normally uh, is to increase the sodium and water retention from various places in the body, but uh, mainly from the collecting duct in the kidneys. Now, there is a condition called as Kohn syndrome, primary hyperaldosteronism. Uh, there is a tumor which is the aldosterone secreting tumor in the adrenal cortex gland. So, it secretes excessive aldosterone and high aldosterone levels, consistently high levels of aldosterone would result in hypertension because increased sodium uh, retention and water retention will cause high blood pressure. It will cause hypokalemia. Why? Because if excess sodium is being reabsorbed, you know sodium and potassium they go in the opposite directions that means potassium will be secreted more and more and potassium will be lost into the urine resulting in hypokalemia and some of that potassium will be attempted to be reabsorbed from the collecting duct in exchange for H plus you know potassium and H plus they will go in opposite directions. So, H plus will be secreted more and excreted acids are excreted resulting in alkalosis. These are the effects of Kohn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism. Now, see what happens with uh, uh, primary hyperaldosterone where there is increased level of aldosterone. Initial phase, yes, the effect will happen. There is increased sodium and water reabsorption and yes, there will be hypertension. Uh, but then, in next 48 hours or so, Sodium and water reabsorption returns to normal in spite of high aldosterone levels. Even in the presence of high aldosterone levels, kidney will escape the effect of that aldosterone and the sodium and water reabsorption which had increased, it will return to normal. This effect has been called as aldosterone escape means the kidney would escape the effect of aldosterone. Initially, there was that effect, but eventually kidneys will ex escape the effect of aldosterone and uh, what was the effect? Increased sodium re uh, and water reabsorption. So, now sodium and water reabsorption will return to normal. That is uh, the aldosterone escape. It may not happen in every individual it may happen only in a few individuals. So, kidney escapes the effect of aldosterone. What is the physiology behind it? Well, increased sodium and water reabsorption initially will cause an increase in the ECF volume. Obviously, sodium and water reabsorbed. Uh, so, ECF volume and circulating blood volume will increase. Now, because of that, there is increased systemic blood pressure. You know, if the blood volume increases, the blood pressure will also increase and there is increased renal blood flow. As a temporary effect, renal blood flow will increase and that will lead to something called as pressure, natriuresis and diuresis. 
This is one postulated mechanism for aldosterone escape. Pressure, natriuresis and diuresis. Here the pressure means the perfusion pressure in the kidney. Because of the increased systemic blood pressure, the perfusion pressure in the kidney has increased and it results in kidney response by causing pressure, natriuresis and diuresis. So high perfusion pressure resulting in natriuresis means loss of sodium into the urine and diuresis, loss of water uh, or water excretion increases into the urine. That means the effect of aldosterone has been counteracted upon, isn't it? Aldosterone was increasing the sodium and water reabsorption. So, less sodium and water was getting excreted into the urine. Now, with this, sodium and water will be lost into the urine. So, the effect has been counteracted. Aldosterone effect has been counterbalanced. So, that's the aldosterone escape, the postulated mechanism. Now, uh, over the next few days or weeks, one more complex mechanism will set in. So, what's that complex response? The complex response is, to put it in simple words, do not allow aldosterone to act. Look, there is an aldosterone secreting tumor. So, aldosterone levels are always going to be high. What if there is no chance for that aldosterone to act on the kidney? Yes, that's what happens here. How does that happen? Prevent reaching of sodium up to the collecting duct. You know, aldosterone is acting on the collecting duct and causing sodium uh, retention, sodium uh, reabsorption and water reabsorption. But what if there is no sodium in the collecting duct, not much of sodium present in the collecting duct. Then even if aldosterone levels are high, they have nothing to reabsorb. There is no sodium in the collecting duct. This would also be a mechanism for aldosterone escape that let the aldosterone levels be high, but I am not offering sodium to aldosterone to be reabsorbed. How does it happen? Okay, uh, there is decreased GFR uh, over a period of time, and decreased GFR means decreased filtration of sodium. So, sodium filtration decreases and whatever sodium has come into the tubule, much of it will be reabsorbed from the early, nef early part of the nephron, PCT. So, less sodium filtration means anyways uh, less sodium reaching the distal nephron and increased PCT reabsorption. So, whatever sodium was getting filtered, much of it got reabsorbed from the PCT. That means what? That means uh, in the collecting duct, not much sodium is going to reach. Sodium will not reach later part of the nephron and the collecting duct. If there is no sodium to be reabsorbed, even if aldosterone levels are high, their effect are not going to be visible. No sodium retention increased under the influence of aldosterone because there is no sodium available uh, in the collecting duct. So, that is another mechanism postulated for aldosterone escape. Now, that being said, another interesting phenomenon called as aldosterone escape or aldosterone breakthrough also uh, has been described. So, let us see one exactly opposite phenomenon also called, also being called aldosterone escape. It is a fascinating, fascinating physiology, I tell you. Here, aldosterone is going to escape. Watch it. Aldosterone escapes the ACE inhibitors. That is called as aldosterone escape. Yes, it is also called as aldosterone breakthrough. Let us understand what is this mechanism. And mind you, this time aldosterone itself is going to escape. All right. So, ACE inhibitors are given in the conditions of uh, conditions like congestive heart failure to suppress the aldosterone levels. Just for recall, you know, uh, there is renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So, renin forms angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by the action of ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs. You know, this happened in the lungs. 
and then angiotensin 2 once it is formed it will cause secretion of aldosterone uh, ace inhibitors are the drugs which are given in the conditions like hypertension uh, or congestive heart failure because uh, they act here and uh, they inhibit the ACE so that there is no formation of angiotensin 2 and if there is no formation of angiotensin 2 then there is no aldosterone secretion as well. You know aldosterone has very deleterious effects uh, in hypertension or congestive heart failure because it, it conserves sodium, it conserves water so ECF volume expands and it has got bad effects on the heart and overall uh, uh, the condition. So, uh, when you give ACE inhibitors, there is no angiotensin 2 and hence there is no aldosterone also, uh, not much aldosterone level is secreting in the blood, uh, secreted into the blood or circulating aldosterone levels will be low uh, when you give ACE inhibitors. So, initially aldosterone levels are low, they are decreased, but then after a few weeks, aldosterone escapes the effect of ACE inhibitors. What does that mean? Aldosterone levels return to normal in spite of the continued giving, uh, uh, means uh, in spite of the presence of ACE inhibitors. The drug is uh, being given ACE inhibitor. So, aldosterone levels uh, are expected to be low, but no, they return to normal. After initially being low, they return to normal and that is also called as aldosterone escape or aldosterone breakthrough. So, aldosterone escape has got two very different meanings and this is the, this is the beauty of physiology uh, and all the subjects based on physiology. So, we are discussing all such concepts on a regular basis. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe now.